we hear that a sower went out to sow. Who's the sower? Christ is. God is the one who's sowing here in this parable. What is he sowing? What's the seed? The seed, the thing that is being sowed, is, is it's his divine word, right? It's, it's Christ himself. So when he talks about some seed fell on the, the path, some fell on the rocky ground, some fell on the thorns, what he's saying is he's talking about himself being implanted in our lives, implanted in our hearts. He who is, who is the way, the truth, and the life, whose goodness, whose beauty itself planted in our hearts. And as, it's, and as it penetrates within us, if our soil is one that receives it, it can um, and, and nourish it and it can penetrate us, his word is powerful. It affects change. That's the whole, the, the first reading is to say from the prophet Isaiah, the Lord says through the prophet Isaiah, just as the rain and snow come down and hit the ground and, and, um, and brings about fruit, so it is that my word comes down and it doesn't leave without effecting change. And so receiving him is what heals, it's what restores. As we looked at last week, if we're, you know, with discouragement or confusion, or if we're looking for rest, it's, it's Christ himself and coming to him is what recreates us, as we talked about last week. It gives life to the soul. But we have to receive him because he will not force himself upon us. And so to be clear, this parable, this story is not about the ability, the ability of the sower. It's not about the effectiveness of the seed. If the seed lands and does not produce fruit, it's because of the soil. So it all comes down to the question of what kind of soil am I? How is it, to what extent am I able to receive him? Am I able to receive his word? Or, or to say, to what extent am I able to receive life itself, peace itself, and have peace of soul? Am I able to hear him on a, on a daily basis of, that he's speaking to me? As we looked at last week, he's always present. He's always speaking. He's everywhere. To what extent do I see him and, and hear him guiding my life and my decisions? And as I mentioned kind of last week, it's like I went into those silent, the, the six days of silence. I didn't, I was in one of those first three bad types of soil. It was kind of like a combination of all three. I had a foot maybe in all three of those soils. And so what I want to do just for the rest of this homily is just offer some questions to maybe serve as somewhat of an examination of conscience, because that question really is the, the question, what kind of soil am I? As I come in here today, in whatever season in life that I am, if I'm in junior high, if I'm in high school, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm a parent with little ones running around, or I'm middle-aged, or, I, or I'm, I'm, I'm a senior, whatever state in life I am, what is my soil? What's my, what, what's my ability to be able to receive God and life and to be at peace of soul? And so if you followed along in the gospel in, our, in our, the blue hymnal, you'll notice that this is the first time over the two years that I've been here, the first time that we didn't have, we didn't choose the long gospel. We chose the short version because the longer version, Jesus, um, unlike any other parable, he not only gives the parable and then he explains the parable and then he gives the application and illustration. So it's like, who, who better to hear from than just him? So I just want to, I want to read what he says and then offer some questions that would hopefully, hopefully serves an examination for us this morning. The first soil, the seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals it away. Or in the parable, the bird comes, the seed just is on the path that's been trampled down by foot, and so it's hard, and the birds just come. And Jesus says, the birds come, and you steal it away. 
So do I find myself spiritually dead these days? Even as, even as I'm here this morning at Mass, as I'm listening right now, does his word even have a chance to penetrate my heart? Or do I come, do I come this morning just completely closed off? Do I approach scripture and the teachings of the church with an open and receptive heart? Or do I, or do I dismiss them without consideration? Has disappointment or hurt caused my heart to become hardened toward God? Am I willing to forgive and seek healing for past wounds? Am I open to the promptings of the Spirit throughout the day? Am I, do I find myself being able to, to hear and to notice the promptings of the Spirit throughout my day? The second soil. Jesus says, the seed sown on rocky ground, remember the seed is it's God's divine word. It's, 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 it's his life, it's, his, it's power. He says the seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no, it has no root and it lasts only for a time. When some tribulations or persecutions come, there it goes and flees. So some questions. Do I experience temporary, temporary enthusiasm or emotional responses to spiritual matters? But then it doesn't lead to lasting change. So maybe like, do I, have I listened to a homily or I'm reading something of spiritual of nature and there's an emotional response to, to, towards a spiritual matter? but it doesn't lead to lasting change, possibly because of habits in my life that hinder my spiritual development. Do I actively seek opportunities for ongoing formation in matters of the faith? When was the last spiritual book that I read? When was the last spiritual video that I watched on YouTube or podcast that I listened to? When was the last time I read my Bible? Do I, do I actively look to deepen and cultivate my soil to go deep through a disciplined prayer life? Third soil, Jesus says, and he explains it. He says, the seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and lure of riches choke the word and it bears no fruit. Are there unhealthy relationships or influences in my life that pull me away from God? What are they? How might they be actively choking out God in my life? Do I allow worldly pressures from school, from friends, from work to compromise my moral principles or values? Am I more concerned with fitting in or seeking approval from others rather than living out my faith authentically? Am I anxious about worldly things that goes over and above and affects my relationship with God and my time that I spend with him? Am I enticed by lure of riches and money? Am I overly focused on material possessions, success, or personal ambitions? And then the fourth soil, the good soil. Jesus says this, he said, the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it. And then who indeed bears fruit that yields 100 or 60 or 30 fold. The freedom and peace that one can experience by having rich soil, that having a receptive heart, it's limitless. The man or woman who has the receptive heart that has soil that's able to receive God, his power, like the ripples effect of the fruitfulness that that brings about in our lives and in the, in the lives of our families and those that we care for, 
those around us, it's limitless. So just to close, close with this, we, we, you know, we just said that the, the parable's not about the sower, to be clear. And so we looked at all these questions to help us to kind of say, okay, where, maybe this season of my life, as I come in today, what, what's my soil? What kind of soil am I? Well, here's the thing. The parable, kind of in a way, is all about the sower. In Palestine, in Jesus' time, seed was very precious. And so, therefore, the sower was extremely careful on where they put the seed and where they sowed. They made sure that they put the seed in rich soil, in good soil. What's the deal with, with the sower in the parable that Jesus says, who's God, who's himself? He's, he sows everywhere. He just, he just throws seed all over the place. He doesn't look at the path that's been trampled underfoot that's hard. He doesn't look at the, the rocky soil and the soil that's got thorns in it and say, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna withhold the seed there. I'm not gonna sow over there. It's not what he does. He sows everywhere. He sows kind of just unabashedly, just says, here's my word, here's my life, here's my peace, here's my love. God wants to share himself with every single one of us. He doesn't want to withhold from any one of us. So through those questions that we sat with, and it's like, okay, like, kind of like that, like the season of my life right now, like I'm this dry path or, or I know the anxieties and, and cares of the world and things going on. Like I know those are the thorns in, in the rock that's in my life. Here's the good news. As you are here, as I'm here, you only need the least bit of receptivity. You just need this tiny, smallest spot of good soil to receive him. And you will come to life 30, 60, 100 fold. You just need the little bit of openness, the littlest, tiniest square. And so maybe as we come up and receive and we move with our body today to receive him and to be nourished, maybe within us, the prayer is, Lord, this is just the little bit that I've got. This is the amount of, of just tiny, maybe I'm on the path or I've got the, 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 the rocks that's there and the thorns that are there, but nonetheless, Lord, this is just the little bit that I can give you right now. And he just sows, he wants to sow himself abundantly and lavishly upon you and me this morning. And then receiving him, we can go out into the field with him and we can shoo away the birds that come. We can take out the rocks. We can pull out all the weeds. And then with Jesus, experience 30, 60, 100 fold.